Have you ever shot moonlit landscape images? So last Saturday, David Flower messaged me and asked if I wanted to go on a bit of a last minute photo mission to capture some moonlit landscape images. Now this isn't something that I've really done before, but I really wanted to have a go. I've shot plenty of night sky images before, but when you're shooting those kind of images, you generally want the moon to be below the horizon. So the plan was to head to the Spen Peninsula, which is the southernmost stretch of the Yorkshire coast, and we were going to meet up with Lincolnshire photographer Jack Coward. So we met up at around 9 p.m. and we set off down the peninsula for what would be a seven mile, five hour hike. Now I'm familiar with the landscape at Spain as I've been many times over the years, but under these conditions and having never really shot images like this before, I really didn't know what to expect. So as we were walking, I decided that I would just treat this as a little bit of a research mission, as I really wasn't expecting anything amazing to come from these images. But I could use the images that I took to give me ideas for another visit under similar conditions. So I'll go through a few of the images that I took, I'll go over the settings, what my thoughts are on the images that I took, and if there's anything that I would do differently if I went back and shot these again. So this first image that I took is, in my opinion, a little bit boring. There's no real foreground interest, there's no subject, and I know landscape photography doesn't necessarily need that, but it's definitely lacking some elements that would potentially make this a really good image. Now, one thing that I thought I could do if I did it again is try and find something like some driftwood or anything else that would make a subject for the foreground, place it in front of the camera, maybe lower the camera down a little bit and illuminate it so that it stood out in the image, popped and just made the image a lot better. So the settings that I used for this image, uh, it was 10 seconds, uh, F4, and it was shot at 500 ISO. Okay, so the next image is nothing spectacular. It's obviously our moon. But for me, images of the moon need to be kind of tight in and full of detail. I love seeing images of the moon where it's been uh, stacked. So multiple images of the moon stacked to create immense amounts of detail. For me, this is just there's nothing to it it's it's okay it's kind of it's in focus it looks reasonably sharp but it's too far away i shot it with my 70 to 200 i used the in body crop factor which makes it equivalent about 300 mil but it's still not close enough in if there were some other elements in the sky like maybe some cloud at top and bottom of the the moon um to give some kind of like eerie kind of feel to it you know just something for the light to bounce off of or, or go through it would potentially make it a little bit better but this kind of image, I don't really think it could get much better. I don't think it's great anyway, but it's always worth having a pop at the moon when the sky's open and you've got full view, bit of full moon. It's, uh, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I definitely don't think I'll be doing anything with this image. So this one was shot at 1 4,000th of a second, f2.8, ISO 200. So up next is an image that I do quite like, but it does need more to make it a good image. There is detail throughout the image. You've got grass in the foreground, lights in the distance and stars in the night sky. And again, I've used Orion's belt as a point of interest in the sky. There is also some reflections in the water that's been left as the tide's gone out in the River Humber. I quite like the way that looks as well. And I think if I just gently illuminated the grass in the foreground, not too much, just to give uh, it some subtle light to emphasize the detail in the grass a little bit more, I think that would make the image that little bit better. This is definitely one I would go back to, and the settings on this one were 13 seconds at f4 ISO 500. So this is another one that I quite like, and I actually don't think I would do much to change this image. If I went back and shot it again, I would potentially use a light source just to give some really gentle light hits to bring out some of the detail in the branches that I've used in the foreground. And I'd also potentially focus stack this image. So focus on the branches, then focus on the night sky, blend those images together in post and see what that would give me, see if it would make the image pop a little bit more. But other than that, I don't think it needs a great deal doing to it. Maybe some other slight adjustments in the edits. Uh, I didn't really go heavy on any of these edits whatsoever. I just wanted to see what I got from this visit. So the settings for this one were six seconds shot at f2.8 and ISO 500. So this next one is okay in terms of its composition. I really like the way that the leading line from the footpath takes you up to the lighthouse, but it's the exposure that lets it down. 
So the moon was directly above the lighthouse, just outside of the frame, which meant there was a lot of shadow on this side of the lighthouse where I was shooting from. Now I could edit this a little heavier, drawing out the shadows, um, adding in some highlights, maybe using some masking to try and brighten the lighthouse up a little bit. But personally, the way I would usually do things like this is I would take a, a hand torch and gently illuminate the lighthouse using some light painting techniques rather than go heavy on the edits. It's worked perfectly well for me in past photos. I've used this a lot in the past and it worked brilliantly well. And in this one, the settings are 13 seconds at F4 and again, ISO 500. Okay, so this is the last image that I'm going to show you. And this one is what it is. It's a telegraph pole. Um, I turned to my left while I was shooting that last image of the lighthouse. And I just happened to notice how the moonlight was hitting the right hand side of the telegraph pole as I was looking at it. I really liked the way it drew out the detail in the wood grain and it also illuminated some of the components of the telegraph pole. I just really liked the way it looked. It's very minimalist. Uh, there's not a lot to it whatsoever. And the stars in the background, obviously in the sky, they, they just add to the image. And I think it looks really nice in my opinion. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on it. I, I don't think there's anything that I would change about this image, but I really like the way it came out. All right. That's it for this one. I just thought I'd go over a few images. I'm a little bit behind in uh, getting some of these videos out, but I'm really grateful for all of the interaction that you guys have been giving me recently. It's been going great. I'm really, really loving being back on YouTube this year. Um, yeah, can't thank you all enough for those of you that have subscribed, liked, commented, all the interactions, absolutely wonderful. So if you enjoyed this one, please give it a thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. And if you want to discuss these images or anything else photography related, please drop a comment. I always do my best to respond to them as quickly as possible. And as always, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Really would appreciate it. It really does help with this channel's growth. Okay, once again, thank you for stopping by. There's more videos dropping soon. So until the next one, see ya.